Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. We've been gone for a while now, but it's, it's been like, like two months. <laughs> yep, something like that. But uh, nearly, we had to return for the event of the year. The we also century. had to go away because we're both very tired. <laughs> yes, it's true. That's there's no lies in there. We are very tired, <laughs> and it's summer, and it's very warm. It's warm. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's not been. We've we've had a pretty like. It's it's been kind of chill for the past couple of weeks here. Got a lot of rain. Um, I'm expecting that to flip on a dime at some point in the next couple of weeks, just because that's the way it works. Mm. But uh, recently, it's been quite wet. It's been quite wet here as well. It's gonna rain soon again if I look out the window, uh, which I don't mind because today I once again boiled in my own sweat. Lovely. That's a love that. That's a Fun. that's that's an image. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're back. Uh, and since I think you kind of forgot, Katie's going to introduce the podcast. Oh fuck! That's right. I do that, don't I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. Back after a mini hiatus. Aren't you all glad? I'm Katie. If you forgot, and that's Lily K. But you couldn't forget that. That's that's insane. <laughs> You can't forget either of us. We're just great. <laughs> so much fun to be around. Uh, and yeah, we're back. Finally, uh, I think you're just going to get right into it because there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, it's like, it's, technically speaking, we could have talked, probably do an entire episode about the stuff that we've watched in the past couple of months because there's been a few, a few things, but there's more important things, such as the it's... cultural event of the year. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we got to do that. So. Sorry, not sorry. We're gonna, you know, talk about the other stuff next time. It's fine. It's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna pick up the pace again, and it's gonna be good. Uh, but yes, uh, Barbenheimer is upon us. It's already happening. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you didn't go to the cinema, why? I, I don't understand. It's you don't fun. even have to go watch both of them, but you should because it's fun. It's about it's... the novelty. True. It's true indeed. So uh, we watched it in different order. We did. Because um, I didn't have a choice. Mm. Uh, if I would have a choice, I would have watched it the same order as Katie did, which was Oppenheimer first and then Barbie. Objectively the correct decision. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, it truly is. Um, I don't know if my opinion would change if I watched it in the other order. I don't think it would. Uh but well, we gotta get to that. Uh, I I think we should start with the with the fun, which is mm. Bobby. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be a way more intense discussion than Oppenheimer is <laughs> gonna be. Probably. So I just I kind of want to get it out of the way because I okay. literally just wrote my Barbie Oppenheimer review for Kautzu. Okay. And I already ranted a lot in there, but you know. There's a lot more to say. <laughs> yeah. So, do you want me to start? Yes. Because I've been having a minor crisis about this for the past two days. <laughs> and okay. literally, I had to, like, I fully, I think, okay, start with, Yes. I didn't like Barbie. I'm putting that out there first. But okay. also, and this is what, I, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen my take on this. I did not like Barbie. I also think Barbie is a good movie. Same. And it's very interesting having to take that and unpack what that means. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that because I'm having such an issue kind of squaring this with myself, actually, Barbie did a very good job of what it was meant to do. In that, it brings up a lot of stuff. But my trouble with it is I don't think it does enough with it. Yeah, we agree on that as well. So I'm just nodding away. You're just nodding so, away. So so far, yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's it's like it's a very fun movie. It's like you can't. There's there's it no is. denying that it's very nope. fun. I laughed a lot at a lot of moments. Mm-hmm. Um. Lots of very very silly things that I very much enjoyed. Yeah. Um. But. But. And mm. this is my trouble because I've been like, it is clearly something that has been um, 
resonating with a lot of people. A lot of people. So many people. And I love that. And I think that's really important. Mm. And I'm so glad that that is a thing for so many people. Um, makes me very happy because I believe that is the point of cinema and, and all of this stuff. Um, my trouble with it is, I think it just comes down to a very personal thing of like, there's this, there's two halves to it, okay? The one mm. half is, I don't like what Charlotte and I have referred to each other as pink feminism. In that this sort of feeling of like, this is what feminism is. Look, we love pink. And this is what being a woman is like. And being a woman is pink and, and complicated. And and I just, it makes me want to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very hard turn. <laughs> I didn't think we're going to go there. I hate, I hate, just, I don't, I hate. <laughs> and, and this is the thing. I get out that I've been one of the many things that I've been kind of going over my head and trying to figure out is that I'm realizing very, very hard that I just it's not that I hate the color pink. I'm wearing pink right now. And actually, I love this shirt. It's a great shirt. I don't actually like this lipstick, but I put it on for the sake of the bit. Um, <laughs> but still, I actually like pink as a color. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing offensive about it. I hate the concept of pink. I mm. hate the way that it is used to like like define what it means to be like feminine i hate that it is the thing that people think of as being feminine mm. um and i hate all of the sort of like culture around it as a thing and like the way that like i don't know there's a full judgment about people who get like especially women who are like i actually fucking hate pink and i don't want to wear it <laughs> and i feel like this movie does a lot of that um i don't actually think it is judgmental but it feels like it's propping up a lot of people to be judgmental mm-hmm. um like th- this is the trouble with it the movie there's nothing actually wrong with it i just feel like the the reaction to it creates something that i despise <laughs> <laughs> just very vehemently but then mm. i get in my head about it because then i'm like well this is just the launch of internalized misogyny that i am spouting now am i a bad woman for somehow hating pink in this way um no it's just like it, it but it, it becomes a very complex thing um uh that i get just i, I was i spent a lot of time trying to unpack it i spoke to a lot of people about it i've read a lot of opinions about the movie and especially specifically a lot of people who very very really i'm just english has gone out the door um (laughs) (laughs) really really loved it and like identified with it and like cried at it and all of these things and i just found it to be like the the other half of it for me Mm. which is that and i think this is the main thing that we really agree on it doesn't go far enough no it doesn't it like it's it it brings up a lot of really interesting concepts mm-hmm. around gender, but it feels very much like level one feminism to me. Um, kind of. In this sort of way of like, okay, you've identified how difficult it is to be a woman in the modern age, or just generally speaking, under mm. the patriarchy and all those sorts of things. And all of that was true. I loved America Ferreira's um, speech that she gives about oh. the contradictions of being a woman. I think it was one of the, the main the highlights of the movie moments. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I did also think that they immediately undercut that by then doing it again <laughs> and then again and then again. I and I was like, come on, I just, you had the thing and then you you let it slip you... away. <laughs> um, it does that a lot. I'm just going to quickly yes, put that in there. very yes. true. It does that a lot. It kind of brings up something and you're like, that's funny and really timely and very good. And then it kind of kills it just... immediately and it's like <laughs> ah, great <laughs> but like i think the thing that um it, it yeah it kind of plays at being a deep study of gender and the the way that gender is like you know affects us in society on a regular basis on a daily basis but it doesn't go the step further which i think is the thing for a lot of people who are interested in gender study in that um especially when you're, you know, um, in spaces where you interact with a lot of people who identify as non-binary or trans or any kind of thing, like non-binary, like not literally non-binary, but like something outside of or against the binary when it comes mm. to gender, it feels very much like 
oh, this is what being a woman is. And it, isn't it just tough that this is the way we're going to have to like sit with this and, and deal with it sort of a thing. Mm. And I'm sure that is a way for a lot of people. But <laughs> for me, it, it, it doesn't go the step further into asking why we have why we continue to hold up these ideals of gender at all mm. Mm. Um, where the next step in is it, which is you know destroying the concept entirely why do we have to uphold any of these things why do we have to like hold so steadfastly onto the concept of what being a woman actually is like what it why, why do we need to continue to hold so tightly to this like ideal even if the ideal is hey i can be whatever i want and be a woman like i'm just why don't we just, do, just throw it away <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. like but then that comes from a very you know personal place of like not really ever feeling like womanhood was something i uh, identify with mm. and continue to not really i go i will go with woman because it's easy and i don't beyond like anything to do with like femininity and that sort of thing same i just (laughs) yeah it's it's, i'm so apathetic to it that when it when it gets like held up as this like isn't this great i'm like i couldn't give less of a shit actually (laughs) sort of a thing yeah Um, but yeah but yeah, and I think the thing that it in that uh, whole thing, and I will let you talk in a second. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, is that I think that by holding up these sort of like the the holding up the thing of like this is gender, what it does in the end is it lets down. It, yes, it lets down. I think some of the Barbie stuff, but I think that holds a bit together a bit harder or better. Mm. What I think it really lets down is the ability for the men to be able to break out of any of their molds. Like, um, I think it lets down the concept of, like, finding, figuring out who you are as a person outside of patriarchy, which is one of the things that the movie attempts to do, but, like, kind of doesn't do very nah. well. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Um, yeah, I feel like it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't allow for, and um, to steal a phrase that John Green used a lot in the promotion of Paper Downs. It doesn't allow mm. t- for anybody to be imagined as complexly as actually I think that they want to be able to. Because, mm. um, I, yeah. I don't know. No, I got you. I... <laughs> <laughs> yep, fully got you. Uh... Just say, put, I put that up, out there. Because, the, yeah, there's a lot of things to praise about the movie, and I think we can go into that in a second because I think that yeah. they're worth talking about as well obviously um, yeah. I just feel like the, the movie had so much more potential within it so much more it's like it's just like li- literally just like a couple of things that I personally would have loved to have seen and then it didn't do mm. and that I found to be quite disappointing yeah I think I think that's what I wrote now. you as well uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> I think the first word that comes to mind with this movie is disappointing for me mm. personally yeah it's like mm, like you know i had this image in my mind that how this movie is going to go mm. which like you know i knew that it's it's not going to be fully what mm. i imagined but like whatever like some indicators that maybe maybe mm-hmm. it's possible mm-hmm. it did not Mm-mm. i was like i have fun I am on the same... It is a, a deeply fun movie. It is, it is. And I am on the same opinion as you, that I don't like it, mm. but it's a good movie. It's good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to deny that, because yeah. I can see why so many people are like, oh, Barbie. Okay, yeah. good. Sure. But... <laughs> <laughs> let me... Uh, let me do it with an example. Okay. Where the whole thing was like... <sighs> here we go again and i don't like it yes and as a point i feel like we didn't mention it but like it'll be in the title i'm sure there are spoilers we are talking oh, about yeah. the plots of both of these movies <laughs> obviously like yeah. you know the embargo is up so you know yeah. spoiler review yes. um so this is my example of where it all went wrong for me basically we have this beautiful scene they are in the real world now mm-hmm. uh, i feel just quickly mention that I once again fucking hated that the first thing we show about men is 
the cat calling, uh, everyone just being thirsty over Barbie and just, you know, just being this general, oh, men are the worst, they are trash. Uh, oh, that's not feminism. <laughs> we don't have to shit on men. <laughs> sure, there are some awful, awful men out there. And I, come on, why, why? Why? Yeah, I think that Why? I understand like what it was going for was this like heavy in the other like it's full satire sort of thing in that like they are showing uh the like over the top version of this thing. I mean that's the whole thing. It is camp yeah. and it is ridiculous and like no, obviously this is not reality. However, it doesn't actually give any examples of any complex men at no. all. No, nothing at all. Which no, like even I think even lets when, it down. <laughs> yeah, like even when they show uh America Farrah's husband, it's like he's just there. He's just okay, fine, sure. All right. Uh but anyway, so it's right after that scene, they are already in the real world, and we have this beautiful, just fantastic moment with Margot Robbie's Barbie, mm -hmm. uh once she connected with her kid that plays with her mm. and she just sits there on the bench sees an old lady and and she's like oh you're beautiful and and she just has this beautiful moment of looking around seeing all the interactions that people have how beautifully sunny it is outside you know how different everyone is and it's it's gorgeous she's crying i shed a tear as well i was so in the moment you can hear billy eilish's what was i made for in the background playing an instrument is it playing which is... at that point i thought it only yeah. played at the end nope nope yeah. it, it it plays an instrument i recognized it instantly because <laughs> i haven't listened to I've... it beforehand so that's oh why. i've been obsessed with it i i think it's her masterpiece fucking love that song it's beautiful so many other songs anyway not about billy eilish <laughs> at the moment it's about that moment and I was like, oh, yes, yes, we're, we're going somewhere with this. It's, it's perfect. And then, <laughs> straight up, we tune into Ken. Ken is going on his little adventure, looking around, seeing all these buff men coming out of the gym, and then uh, meeting with a, with, a, with a businessman, and he talks about uh, patriarchy and how it is secret one, and we, you know, women don't know about it, but we still are the... <sighs> main people and then he sees this absurd commercial which you would never see that is just very generic men riding horses whatever they are doing and, and he's he's obsessed instantly and i'm like sorry that is one of the good bits of the movie though to be <laughs> And the I'm fact like, that he uh, thought that the patriarchy was about horses and then got really yeah, bored about it. <laughs> obviously, obviously. That's, <laughs> so good. that's like, come on. Yeah, that's funny. But like at the same time, we send Barbie on this wonderful, beautiful moment, and then we turn in, tune into Ken, and it's like, really? That's all he gathers. He doesn't see one dad who's playing with his kid. He he doesn't see anyone who's like not this awful look at man. He just sees the you know dad, mm. and I'm like, why? <laughs> Yeah, I, I say, like, why I'm... are we doing this? Like, you know, I understand, and yes, women all the way, feminism, fucking love that. But at the same time, I can't help but think that this is not how you do it. Like, you know, I don't think it should be about this that one is better than the other. And it, it's especially in the first part that is definitely what comes off of it because cans are uh, accessories and and they basically just dumb as how uh they are only living in that world to worship barbies and it's all about oh barbie oh wow 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 and i'm like i don't know how that sits with me <laughs> yeah I, I i i've read a lot about this honestly it was one of the things that i've been like reading um I've, I've been i've been in the tags i've been in the tumblr tags i've been reading yes. people's posts because i yes. wanted to get better sense of other people like talking about it so i can maybe get a better sense of like the um initial intent uh i guess um and i i, I actually I've come to appreciate more sort of what she was going for in this sort of arc in that it this um the introduction of the patriarchy is a lot like the way that young men get introduced to right-wing politics when they're teenagers basically mm -hmm. um in that th there are spaces where they don't feel appreciated enough and the places where they feel start feeling more appreciated are in these cult-like spaces 
that teach them that actually they're way better than everybody else and that they shouldn't listen to anybody else and that's how mm. you lead people down to ra- radicalization and it's like that that is the prison of the patriarchy and um and it, the ending is meant to show this sort of space of like how it doesn't fulfill him right because i mean he says himself which is still really funny <laughs> that like the moment he realized it wasn't about horses he kind of lost interest yeah. um yeah, yeah, like yeah. he just wants to hang out and like the whole thing with ken in that whole his whole arc of the movie is that he just wanted to be appreciated better yeah and it's very fair and i think That's... the movie does actually give credence to that space what i don't think it allows for is for any of the kens to actually become three-dimensional oh yeah yeah um like I, I, I think I would have liked that whole the final scene with with Barbie kind of letting Ken know and apologizing for like kind of taking mm. him for granted mm. and all this other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love and I don't get me wrong, Ryan Gosling is very funny in this, and I understand why everybody is like giving him so much praise. This is your umpteenth reminder that you should absolutely go watch the Nice Guys because he is just iconic in it. It's like just perfect. It's um, very funny, but. I feel like that scene. I think the uh, the the the, the mm. facade should have gone right. Yeah. It's like it, that could have been taken to a place where actually he got to be real. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and even if it was just for like a second, where like he actually allows yeah. the moment to like really hit him properly and all this sort of stuff that would have allowed him the ability to become more three-dimensional or even if he just did it for like any of them um yeah yeah, yeah. I um i don't know it just i feel like it he didn't get and it feels it, i understand that there's i feel like there's probably going to be somebody who says something along the lines of why do we <laughs> why am i putting so much credence on the fact that the men weren't represented properly in this movie but i think that's the whole point <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i have to agree um and the only thing that because I I read a lot of articles as well and opinions and whatnot, and the only thing that kind of turned me around a little bit mm. is uh, is one quote uh, from. Oh, she's quoting. Yes, I'm quoting from Katie Pickles' uh, article. Uh, it is Ken, not Barbie, who whines about blonde uh, fragility and every night being a girl's night. And who now sings of seeking to push women around and take them for granted. This is where the movie is at its most uh, profound. Ken, not Barbie, is the victim of sexism. As Barbie has flourished, Ken has been left behind. Ken's are the objectified, excluded second sex. Yeah, and I think but I think that to kind of expand on that a little bit more, just so that we're not going into a place of being like reverse sexism, because, you know, that's not... No, but uh... <laughs> uh, but like this is what the patriarchy does to everybody. It it, it yeah. like it, it, it oppresses and in it, it it destroys the ability for men to be anything other than um, this toxic uh, mm-hmm. version of masculinity. Wherein we, I feel like if we're going to be doing something that like explores gender, we need to explore what happens when we destroy the concept of gender. <laughs> yeah, but, like uh... when, when we destroy the concept of what gender roles like. Of, of, of like holding any gender roles to any kind of esteem um mm. which is why when i was talking to you one of the big things i was like i want to see more kens dressing like barbies and i want to see barbies dressing like kens and i want to see kens who decide that they actually want to be barbie <laughs> like these are all the things and i want to just like and i and i feel like i put this forward as a bit of a joke but also i'm quite serious i think the kens should have made out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and again, there were so many things that honestly should have been in here. And I think that's why the whole thing is is kind of disappointing mm. to me. Um, but this article, especially the, the one I uh, quoted, uh, I think it gave me a new perspective on the, the whole Ken thing that mm. just bothered me so much because I talked about this already. Like, you know, I hate the kind of feminist movies where it's like i'm a woman so i can do this and i'm better than you and i'm like but we we're not going around yelling that out like you know that's not how you do <laughs> feminism nobody but... actually wants that <laughs> nobody wants that nobody no. wants like a hierarchy <laughs> you just want to be seen like and i think the things that the, the movie does at its best are the points where it stops focusing on the concept of gender and focusing on the concept of what it means to be human 
Yeah. Um, which is why that scene of her uh, like shedding that tear and looking over at like the first old woman she's ever seen and yeah. playing with like her whole chest. The most, so the most beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Um, that's about like being a person. It's not yeah. about like it's not about having to remain in this space where you are a woman. And it's like, yeah, like I'm aware that there are always societal like th- struggles and the 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 pressure of it all and the contradiction of it all, which was mm. so beautifully and eloquently put out by Gloria. I think her name is. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think it's Gloria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Gloria. Um, but I don't know. It's like uh, the other thing I have. Um, it's not issues with just like it just it just doesn't. I feel like it doesn't do enough is the idea that Kate McKinnon's Barbie as weird Barbie is meant to kind of represent like queerness essentially because she's the the strange Barbie who doesn't fit into everything else and she's got the you know the the shorter haircut and she's wearing the slightly more masculine like clothes and and doing and has this sort of more world weary sort of view about her but I feel like she represents too much that it, it the entire like premise of her gets lost basically uh, i think her character for me was more like the representation of how i feel about femininity like you know i'm not a feminine woman i'm just you know I'm quite boyish and whatever and i like clothes that are just like unisex and that i just don't care to be honest i i can't deal with pink <laughs> either so it's like and and she was like she was the closest thing in the movie where it wasn't your typical barbie Bobby. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, there you are." But I feel like Kinda. even then, even then, I was looking at her, and I feel like I, I was like, "I don't know." She just it, it, she wasn't a big enough presence for it to oh, no. matter enough. Not at all, right? Not at all. Um, Not at all. So I'm like, the, but the it, other thing I I had an issue with, uh, and I want I want to put this in here because I didn't write it in the article. I completely forgot to mention this. The other thing I had an issue with is that I have to go to the real world. Uh, and then, no, I have to go back to Barbie land, uh, you know, get everything right. And I want yeah, my Barbie just... land back. And then I want to become a human. But then I... I... Are we so going to talk is... about the last line? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I've I've come around a little bit on this because it's been pointed out to me that it was a joke. Um I, I took way too seriously because um, okay. um, the, the I think we all know it, it. The whole thing is that it's set up and it's meant to look like she's about to go into a job interview, and it turns out she's at, gone to the gynecologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I very like I think maybe I was just in a point where I was like just really down on the movie. I was like, what the fuck does she have to become a mother? That's stupid. Barbie doesn't have genitals. No. So the fact that she's going to the gynecologist, I don't know. I think maybe I just like took a step beyond and I was just like assumed that she, because she was human that like that, you know, she just had all the parts now. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. And I think that's the point. I think that's the joke um, that I took a bit too seriously. And I went, OK, that's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like at the time I was like, fuck, is she becoming, I don't like this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> made me so mad because okay. I just I think it, it, it for me that just as a moment after this like feeling of like I feel like this movie is putting too much emphasis on like the idea that we are stuck in this place of like being like like we can't let go of the concept of being a woman like we have to be trapped in it mm-hmm. um sort of a thing as opposed to just like ignoring the whole thing entirely and just living however the fuck you want yeah. um so to take that and of like feeling like it's not doing that enough and then to go to a place where it's suddenly like barbie in her search to become human has to become a mother in order to do that that pissed me off <laughs> um but like you don't need to go to a gynecologist to actually like decide that if you want a child you can go for regular checkups and sorts of things as well i think <laughs> that's true this is the, this is the other thing um yeah. uh but I don't know. That's that concept really got mm. me. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, which is fair. Uh, all right. How would you rate it out of ten? What would you give it to to this movie? No, no. I feel really weird about it. It's the thing. I feel like seven is about as like far as I get. I feel like because I think seven me. seven gives enough to be like this is a good movie, and then the other three are just like I didn't like it. <laughs> Fair. It's a six for me. 
I just, yeah, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't sit well for me. Although I don't want, I do want to point out because I didn't know this at the time. Yes. Um, and that actually made the whole thing a little bit better for me is that one of our Barbies, Hari uh, Neff, is in fact a trans woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't yep. know that at the time. Uh, and also makes some of the weird press that has come out around it being like this and promotes the trans agenda. When I was sitting there like this, does I don't know what you think the trans agenda is, but this is nowhere close to it. But okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, and that was like, oh, okay, that's nice. I like that, and I love, yeah. um, I love Sharon Rooney generally speaking, and I like to see the, lots of different versions of like different, you know, yeah. body types in Barbie. Yeah, yeah, okay. cool. I like, I like that in there as well. And, like, I right. should also point out that like, I was not a Barbie kid. That feels like something important to say that I, I had one Barbie, and like. I don't know how much of it was that, like, I was, I mean, a big part of it was I just wasn't interested in dolls, really. I had some, but they were not my focus. I have bears. I'm a big teddy bear person. You are, yeah. Um, yep. yeah <laughs> quite yeah, famously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I had I had one Barbie, and I feel like maybe I had asked for more at some point, but I just was denied. I seem to have this, I have this image, of this memory of my, of my, di- my dear lovely mother really not liking Barbies and not wanting mm-hmm. to me to have Barbies, yeah. um, which she may end up watching this and give more context to because I was a child <laughs> <laughs> uh, at this time. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't into dolls. And I don't know, it, I feel like it, the, the way the movie was marketed where it was like, if you love Barbie, this movie is for you. If you hate Barbie, this movie is for you. And I'm sitting there like, what if you were entirely ambivalent to the concept of Barbie? You know who I am? Mm. I am the girl who does the weird barbies i've been cutting hairs just you know drawing on them <laughs> I everything so fair. i didn't do that to barbie i did do that to my teletubbies um the... had teletubbies i had Jesus. teletubbies oh. and i was big into teletubbies when i was very small but I, I had i had teletubbies uh and uh at a certain point i did take a biro to their faces uh <laughs> i just do like on them because like biro it was like a plastic surface it came out you know I, I can understand. I was I've been drawing small. and everything. <laughs> yeah, true, true. All right. Uh, so that was a Barbie review. That's and now Barbie. let's let's jump ships and uh, let's talk about Oppenheimer. Yes. And yes. I saw Oppenheimer first. I feel like maybe seeing Oppenheimer first set me up for a movie that was like, I don't know. I feel like Trust it me. gave me expectations <laughs> in a sense. Uh, I, I, you know, I... First off, if you haven't listened to our almost very first episode, I think it was, no, it was very a very first, first episode. episode. Uh, I love Christopher Nolan; like he's my favorite uh, director. So I'm like, mm, let's get that out of the way. I am, you know, when it comes to Nolan, I'm like, yes, yes, God, I shall bow <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> That's me. Mm-hmm. That's I'm, I'm not even going to deny it. Um, but I think even if I wouldn't like Christopher Nolan, I would still think that this movie is just such a fantastic, not only character study, because it is a character study, it's it's also a wonderful and very sad history lesson of the darkest day <laughs> of human history, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love, love, loved Killian Murphy as Oppenheimer. There he is. He's... This honestly kind of represents exactly how I watched basically the entire movie. Yep. At least in the, the, the most Kinda. part, I literally I was sat there like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah." It, it, it kind of was like that, to be honest. It's just like this, it, it's very intense watching. <laughs> mm, yeah, I, I I think I what I remember watching it is that uh, I just sat there and I knew that this is history and this these things happened. I was kind of sitting there just praying that the test wouldn't happen. And I knew it would, <laughs> but I was like, oh, please don't, like, just don't do it. And there were so many little, like, lines and conversation where it was like, maybe this is a bad idea. We shouldn't, <laughs> we shouldn't do this. And I'm like, <laughs> not a good idea. We should stop. <laughs> we should, we, you really should. Uh, and then the bomb went off, which is honestly. It's a stunning piece of cinema. <sighs> Anyway, speaking, Oof. it's like like no pun intended, but it it literally blew me away. <laughs> 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 so I was like, all right, all right. Uh, and then the most 
surrealistic scene happens when they stand up and and applause the whole thing. Yeah. So I have like I the, the thing I have been saying about the movie is that everything from um truly one of the most horrifying conversations I've mm-hmm. ever seen in my life where they are picking which cities to oh. bomb in Japan and they're like but not Kyoto because that's where my wife and I went on our honeymoon and it's gorgeous there and it's just sort of like Un- unrealistic uh, honestly honestly any person like this is the, my, the massive thing for me is that any person who's criticizing this movie who hasn't seen it who seems to think that it's a piece of pro US military propaganda mm-hmm. Watch the, movie. the watch the movie pretty much that point in the entire build up to the trinity test and just till the end of the film it's a horror film straight mm. up it's a horror it movie. is, <laughs> it is. It, it, you sit and they're like oh my god yeah if you look at it any differently there's something wrong i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> there is something wrong it's <laughs> just like I, it's, I was just it's like it, it is it's fully a horror film and it's mm. some of the most effective horror that I've seen oh, yeah. in a while because it's true it's, it's, it's a piece of our history which just to think about that it's like huh, why it's like, <laughs> it's like I don't quite understand how you could look at any any of the shots of his just thousand yards there and think yeah that's that's a man that they're you know holding up as, as a, a hero to the people mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously, it's once again, no secret. I didn't know much about Oppenheimer. I only knew what I think the general knowledge said. He's he the... was the inventor of the atomic bomb, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, but uh, I did read a bit more about him after watching the movie. And, you know, they were very accurate with, with a lot of things in there. And one of those things is the conflict that he felt about the whole thing Mm -hmm. and and i think it's kind of clear in there that uh he was conflicted about the whole thing from the beginning but at the same time his ego was like i i can't do this Mm. i think there's a lot of i think that what the movie does incredibly well is that it shows that there was a lot of different influences um in there for him that pushed him towards making this decision and i think it also pushed him towards not understanding the gravity of the decision that he was making by deciding and getting very involved with the production of this thing because i think Mm -hmm. a big part of it yes is the ego of being like well i was you know the one who pushed for the you know the the discussion and the the expansion of these theories into um Mm. Uh, you know, nuclear fission and all of these sorts of, uh, you know, things and um, the, the idea that we could create a bomb. I think the really important thing um, to show on the other side of his ego was the fact that he was, you know, a, a Jewish man who mm. was told that the Nazis were building a bomb uh, and there was an element of, like, I think we need to do this first. And I don't think I agree. <laughs> Yeah, and I want to put that out there. I think the, obviously the creation of this thing led to horror that we mm. are still, you know, kind of stuck in. Um, but it, I think the thing that, um, I think, and the thing that kind of gets me uh, really annoyed when I see people being like, uh, um, the, they they see a movie which makes a very pointed effort of not being judgmental, mm. and they cast judgment on the non judgmentalness. Yeah. Oh. So that they think that by in showing everything, they are being um, uh, uh, they're giving too much credit to uh, a person who doesn't deserve the credit. And I think there are some places where it's like, yeah, I don't think we need to be listening to like <laughs> I don't know um, who's a good example of somebody who's extremely right wing and says stupid things. We don't need to be listening to Trump, and we don't need to be making movies about the life of Trump and putting him in. in a- <laughs> <laughs> in a context where we can feel sorry for him I don't think that's necessary especially because he's still alive and is still a pain in the ass and has yep. caused immeasurable amounts of pain in recent years yep. but I think you know Oppenheimer has been dead for some time now mm. uh, and um, I think to paint somebody as human is not mm. a failing you know no. it's like it's like we wouldn't do this for Hitler <laughs> you know and that sort of a thing or and and i wouldn't agree with anybody who would want to try and do something and you know people have done 
that sort of thing for Hitler in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and in an attempt to like, I don't know, I, I can understand the human um, impulse to try and make sense of a person who can do so many things that are so inherently evil, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't like the word evil when it comes to people because I think it become, makes things simplistic, but the actions were evil. I think yeah. is a fair thing to say. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but I think it, like to say that this movie is like an indictment of him or the actions that he made is just simplistic and and narrow minded. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're welcome to watch it and to still come out with that view, and that that's fine. And, and as is everybody's right to to you know yeah. Uh, decide that this is not something that they want to engage in and i'm fully yeah of course do that fine um that is the the point of uh, people having an opinion on these things but i think it's just simplistic and uh pointless um and 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 it allows for a complete lack of empathy if to me uh, oh yeah decide that um anybody who wants to be like well okay i actually want to look at somebody who did something Mm. um or created something like this that led to immeasurable um pain um Mm. and consequences uh and go um well if we examine this properly maybe we can make an understanding of and decide not to do Mm. the same thing again um uh sort of a, a thing i guess um yeah I feel like I have more points, but I want you to say things now so I can formulate them properly. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, I think if you think that this movie glorifies mm. Oppenheimer, I will say this just blatantly, you're wrong. It does not. It's it's not a movie to to glorify him or to be like, hey. oh, but no. <laughs> Man. No, it just shows that, you know, he was also a human. He was a bit too ambitious, but he had, he 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 was aware of, of what he did. It's that and... thing of, of intention versus um, uh, effect, I guess, isn't it? There was like, I, you yeah. can have whatever you think of as being the noblest intentions, but it doesn't take away from the fact that, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people died. And there are more effects that the, the, his actions and the actions of the Manhattan Project had um, in the creation of the bomb that weren't explored mm. in this movie. Um, but yeah, but again, you can't put everything in there. So no, but fine. like, it, but it, it's. I think it's one of those things where it's like, if you're so annoyed about the concept of this movie not doing everything, go and do your own reading. Mm. <laughs> um, exactly. There yeah. are, uh, in the other side of it, it, that is the number of people who are like, oh, they didn't show any Japanese people in this film. And I'm like, well, no, because I didn't come into contact with any Japanese people. <laughs> as far as I am aware, no. I'm also not suggesting I am anywhere close to an authority on Oppenheimer. I have seen a movie. Um, <laughs> um but the, you know, the, but if you if you're interested or and feel like the need to see the other side of these things, there are Plenty. so many incredible pieces of like art uh, and literature about the effect that you know Hiroshima had on mm-hmm. the people of Japan, um, yeah. especially the people who might have you know been there. There is mm. um, something that keeps being brought up. It was a manga and got turned into a film. I think it's called something like. It's called Barefoot Something. Um, I'm not aware. Uh, Barefoot Jen. Okay. Um, and I've seen it being mentioned quite a lot. It was a manga that came out in the 80s. Mm-hmm. No. No? The movie came out in the 80s. Okay. When did the manga come out? Was it like a movie or an anime? So it was. it started as, as a manga. And mm-hmm. then, um, uh, which it ran from 73 to 90, sorry, 87. And then the movie came out in the middle of the run uh, in about 83. And okay. there were two movies. Um, okay. And it is, um, uh, uh, parts of it are a first hand account of like literally on the ground in Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
uh, and that the effect of that <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but it's not the one that I've seen mentioned quite a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, over the past couple of weeks, as the run up to the movie, and especially over the past few days as the movies come out. Mm. Um, so you know, this, the, and, and I think the one of the most famous things is that Godzilla is like literally a creation, like a reaction to the effects mm. of this thing. Yeah. Um, but so it's like, yeah, I understand that this is a limited view, but it is intentionally limited and also is, yeah. i'm gonna be honest i don't really think i trust christopher nolan to be doing an entire movie about the effects of, of you know the bomb on hiroshima as a british american guy <laughs> i honestly just don't think that i don't think that's really... for him i don't think that's for him to tell <laughs> uh it's not for him to tell but it's also something that I don't think I want to see, to be honest. No, that's also very true. I think that could be, yeah, on a, another part is that it could be incredibly exploitative. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that the decision that they made that they're not going to include it in the movie mm. was very smart. It was very, very smart. Uh, I saw someone complain about it on Twitter. Like, why did you see the bomb go off in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? And I'm like, do you want, you want to see that? That's, you want to oh see my that? God. Yeah. Yeah. The other, thing, the other thing that pissed me off immensely that some idiot and i'm gonna say this because it was an idiot took one sentence out of the movie one sentence without any context anything when they say that our only chance is anti-semitism and that's all that they put on twitter and i'm like <laughs> no there's they're, context they're... to that you fucking moron <laughs> he's betting on the, the idea that he's not going to use jewish scientists properly because he's anti-semitic that's the whole point of the line He's fun. Ugh. Like ah, I, media it's... literacy is dead. If you want to like be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck this movie over. Like, okay, yeah, go ahead, sure, go <laughs> ahead, sure. But like, you literally took something out of completely out of context, completely bad, out of context. Media bad faith readings. It's like, shut up, please, just educate yourself for fuck's sake. <laughs> It really pissed me off. I was like, you can't be serious. And I saw so many people, bless you all, who were like, yeah, the context of that. <laughs> God damn. I, I hate when people do that with movies, books, whatever it is, mm. and just take one part out that it's like very questionable. And of course it's questionable because you took it out of the context. Okay, mm. I shut up. I I, I stop. I, it's fine. <laughs> Calm down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, mm. Um, I will quickly go and say I had three very very favorite moments in this movie mm. that are that just stuck with me completely uh one of them is um obviously the the test mm. of the bomb it's so powerful yeah again no pun in, in, intended uh it's literally so powerful when literally. that blast finally goes oh because what's really fascinating about that whole thing is the way that like because Nolan is Nolan and he loves his physics. Um, do you have that really long period of silence because sound does not travel as fast as light? So we see the explosion before we hear it. Um, exactly. The feeling of that explosion going off in the cinema, um, the bass on that movie is fucking insane. The mm -hmm. seats were shaking. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Same with us. Same with us. It's it was like I I jumped just... when it finally went off. I was like, Fuck. yep. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I was the same. I was like, and I saw other people go like, mm. uh, "Jesus, what was that?" <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, I had a guy uh, sitting next to me because it was packed. Like, oh yeah, both packed. screenings. I, I should point out. So both yeah. screenings I was in, cinema was full. full. Like it was full. Yeah, same here Super. as well. <laughs> Completely full. Uh, and during the weekend as well, as I heard from my friend. Uh, but uh, it was quiet. I was so Dead afraid. Quiet that quiet because i i was so afraid because there was a group of people sitting behind us which i couldn't avoid no matter where i sent uh and they were very loud while the trailers were lasting yeah and i was like oh my god if i have to <laughs> fight these people i will but like please don't and i'm not joking the second the movie started they shut up and they were silent throughout the whole thing and i think that shows this movie's power that just takes people over like oh yeah, I think we 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 all are witnessing together one of the darkest moments <laughs> in our history, and it just you know makes everyone shut the fuck up <laughs> basically. Uh, and I was very grateful for that. I'm not gonna lie; it was also like a confirmation that 
this movie has the effect that it should have yeah. uh, on people. Uh, so the Trinity test? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so the Trinity test, uh, and a guy was next to me was silently saying, oh, what did you do? <laughs> and I was like, oh, bless your heart. But I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I was like, yep, what did you do? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the second uh, favorite scene that stuck with me is a scene that if I'm complete, almost completely correct, I think it kind of happened word to word, is uh, Oppenheimer's talk with Truman, who was played by Gary Oldman, instantly recognized. Yeah, him. that was that was another one that was... Because um... I think that's the first time we actually see him slip a little bit. Yep. Like yep. in front of another person. Yep. Uh, that, in, in front and he gets of immediately the president. Shunted. Like, yep. get the fuck just, out of here. Yeah, just <laughs> fuck off. Uh, and uh, Truman did say uh, that he doesn't need crybabies like him. That's that's a real line that that was said about Oppenheimer because Oppenheimer says in that scene that I feel like I have blood on my hands, uh, and and I think that was the first time when he was he admitted it, like properly, not just maybe in front of his wife or whatever, but in front of like basically a stranger mm. who happened to be the president of the United States. But you know that's. <laughs> Mm. whatever uh that i think that's a very powerful scene uh especially if you look at it from a point of view like you know ah yeah we you know we have this mass murdering fucking bomb and uh, a person who created it feels bad but who cares because we won and also we think you're making a bigger one um yeah 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 exactly uh and the third scene is actually the closing scene because once again Nolan did something very smart. I freaking love when he does this. He showed the scene at almost at the very beginning of the film mm. of uh, Einstein. And, I was going to uh, say this is the Einstein talking. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you don't know what it's about. And Louis Strauss is played by Robert Downey Jr. And he's fucking fantastic. He's so good at it. <laughs> fucking fantastic. Like I think we all knew that Robert Downey Jr. was a good actor, but it's like, really nice to see him be like really good again. <laughs> really good again. Exactly. Um, and uh, it's it's a talk between Einstein and Oppenheimer and until the very end you don't know what the talk was about and once it is revealed honestly it's one of the most haunting and horrifying endings that you can get out of the movie and it is that because it's so true uh, there's a talk in the movie about uh, there might be a chain reaction once the bomb is you know exploding and whatever and it can just destroy them yeah (laughs) it just won't stop and it's just going to destroy the whole world and obviously Oppenheimer has a talk about this with Einstein and at uh, the very end he's like do you remember our talk about the whole chain reaction thing and I said yeah what about it Uh, and Oppenheimer just said I think we didn't and I was like like, yeah I so I so um the cinema I go to is my my local cinema and I yeah. uh, basically see every single movie I I can yeah. very rare that I go to any of the other screens in this one screen that they call the lounge which is yeah. you know less seats but they're bigger seats and they're like big reclining things and I I don't like going to the cinema any other way nowadays because they're just <laughs> so comfortable I get to lie down as opposed to be sitting and it, it's like Fair. honestly don't think I could have seen this movie in a normal chair I think I would hard. have been so uncomfortable. Mm. So the um I so I was wearing I was wearing a lot of black, but I wasn't wearing all black. Um I watched the entire credits because I always watch all the entire credits and I kind of sat there for the entire credits just like processing really mm. and everybody else left. And they cause like there was I was coming into the same screen like ten minutes later to see Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Um they were doing a really quick job because I think they, they started a little bit late. They were doing trying to be really quick about like tidying the whole place up so they could bring people in for the next screening. Um and the woman came over, she was like putting glasses away, and I started moving and she goes, Oh my god, you like disappeared into the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting there like <laughs> yep. <laughs> just like yep. trying to like allow this whole thing to like sink in properly just and like really kind it. of like just digest it properly. And like yeah. honestly, I left it because I had to and was like, ready for the next film and yeah. I was like I think maybe I should have left more time between this <laughs> 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 I was really in my head about the whole thing um, yeah no I think I agree with you on all of those fronts I think it was, I found it really interesting I mean it was like it was kind of easy to see where that was going um, mm. when it came to Strauss um, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, in that he like got so upset and was so egotistical about the concept of, of this like conversation the fact that he didn't and einstein didn't look him in the eye he goes he poisoned the entire scientific yep. community what he is like 
You ever considered it just wasn't about you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it's like he getting that thrown in his face where he's like, what? That, <laughs> I was like, what? not didn't like nowhere close to even considering that as a as a concept. It's just like, no. Um, I watched a lot of the movie seeing Rami Malik pop up every once in a while and being like, mm. Rami Malik hasn't said a single fucking word yet. Yep. <laughs> and then when he does, it's like, oh, I see why. <laughs> Also, little little tiny thing in there. Uh, so Silad Leo was in the movie. He has a talk with Oppenheimer at one point. He was the guy behind, you know, the whole propaganda against dropping the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. He's he was Hungarian. Okay, and he was played by a Hungarian. Excellent. Because uh, Christopher Nolan was like, yeah, yeah, we need yeah. we need the Hungarian for a Hungarian role. <laughs> uh, that was Homo Mate. Uh, he's great. He's great. He's been he's been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, Glad to see him succeed. Cool. Well done, nice. well done. Um, um, I want to bring up because I feel like because we was do we, we 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 were quite so critical about Barbie. I want to make sure that we give the same credence to this film. Um, I do think that one of the weakest points of it were the women. Um, uh, specifically Florence Pugh as Jean Hatlock. I don't think she was well drawn enough to actually make sense. In the narrative, I couldn't get a read on what the, what her deal was. Like, I could kind of see what she meant to him and like the effect she had on him, but as her own person, I had no idea what the fuck was going on with her. Other than like, I guess she was like not well mentally. Mm -hmm. Like, but beyond that, that that's not context enough to her. Yeah, like, the whole thing of her being like, I don't want you to bring me flowers. I was like, okay, why? <laughs> Like that just there wasn't enough there for me to like understand her as a person so that I could actually understand her, her in her relationship to him. Mm. It, it just it felt so like she felt kind of closed off to me mm. uh, to a point where it just sort of like felt like she was fulfilling a role within his life as opposed to being a person in her own right. Um or it just that felt like that, especially in the fact that this is the first time no one's done like nudity in film yeah, yeah yeah a lot of her turning up is her with her tits out um yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just sort of being not like i don't know she doesn't feel like a person in this narrative mm. to me and i found that to be disappointing um that being said the scene that i'm thinking of um where like they are dressing him down for his connection to Jean, and then uh, I, you know, by associating her, his connection to communism, where they bring up the fact that he went to go see her, and the the, yeah. pat, the camera like dollies across, and then you see him suddenly like laid bare, literally, where he's yeah. just suddenly there naked. I was like, that's a good piece of imagery. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was yeah. impressed by it, um, and I understand the whole thing of like the cut to him like the way that kitty was watching him like she's yeah. like having to be witness to this thing kind of for the first time and she's kind of feeling the horror of it i understood it i got it i just felt like she wasn't present enough for that to feel like much more than a woman had sex with man and that was what she was there for mm. um and you know there that's considering the movie the previous movie that we were talking about was an incredibly you know uh, feminist piece even if it has its downfalls that felt like an incredibly unfeminist thing and I, I, like i just i didn't feel great about it um yeah. and even th then i uh, like kitty doesn't feel great as a character until the scene where she manages to fucking destroy that mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the um and i did love that um i, I was shit emily blunt kind of just sort of summed up her entire Oscar campaign in that one scene, I think, actually. Yep. Um, Agreed. But I, I it, it feel like, yeah, it doesn't give a whole lot of space for, especially as there's so few women in the, in, in the story, for them to feel particularly fleshed out and, like, well-rounded. Because, like, yeah. up until kind of that point, all she felt like was wife who drinks a lot and also apparently kind of hates her kids. Um, uh, and it, it's just sort of like, yeah, it just I feel, it felt and I didn't like it too much. I don't, I, I don't feel great about it, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say anything that can be turned against me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will 
put it like this and I hope that you know it's gonna you know it's not gonna be turn around it was not about women no, and I'm not. That's not. That's not what I mean. I yeah, just. I know, think, but I it's think. Like... I think there's a place of like. No, it's not about women. I understand that entirely, but at the same time, you could do more to make them a little bit more with yeah, but, a bit more depth. But then, then here's the thing, because I saw so many things that people brought up that you know they should have been in there. That should have been in there. Blah blah blah. Sure. Then it should have been a series and not a movie. And then we could have put everything in there that affected Oppenheimer mm. uh, connections, whatever. I think it was. I think they showed enough to understand how he's because if you don't know this, uh, whenever see, we see uh, the color image, that's from the point of view of Oppenheimer. So it's like it was written in in the first person. person. Uh, and then whenever we see the black and gray, that's written in the third person. So it's it's something that happens but outside of Oppenheimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, I'm so... so glad I watched some of the press around this movie before I saw it, to be honest with you. I feel like some of the stuff that I saw would have gone straight over my head if I hadn't had some of that stuff explained to me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think I would have been the same. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, and I, I think we got the necessary information to understand how Oppenheimer worked in a way mm. and how his life was and what defined him because first I wanted to say to what you said about Florence Pugh's character that I read about her a lot and obviously there's a lot more to her mm. uh, uh, to the person who was playing uh, but uh, first I wanted to say that they could have just left her out but that's not true because no, she had a big I, effect I, he's, on that, that linked to communism is such yeah. an important yeah so they couldn't do that, but at the same time, I understand why it's not about. That's her. <laughs> so I kind of, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not defending it because you know decisions, decisions. But at the same time, eh, it, it's one of those things where it's like one of those things where it's like, and I think it's part of the reason why I love cinema so much, yeah. and, and especially movies like these where it feels when both of them were so singular in the way that they were written, yeah. in that Nolan wrote this script and then he directed it, and then Greta along with Noah Baumbach but like, wrote this, that script and yeah, she, yeah, then yeah. she directed it. it they, these are the decisions of like singular people yeah. who were trying to, you know, express an artistic vision. And I think that that's why I like movies that are flawed inherently. Yeah. Um, uh, they feel more like real things, you know, they, they have yeah. a, a, a more, there's more complexity to them inherently because of that. Yeah. Um, which is why I like three star movies and we've talked about it that many times. Um uh, and it, it, which is why I, I will inherently respect any movie that feels like it's been made by a person or like a group of people more than like a lot of mm. franchise films which are yeah. made by committee or any attempts that the studios might make to write any movie via AI. <laughs> this is a pro-union podcast. Yes. <laughs> Just... Just... <laughs> we're putting that out there um uh but yeah so like i i i can respect the decision and the the way that the decision was made because mm -hmm. i it's no, it, at no point do i feel like it was made it was like a bad faith thing right yeah yeah um, yeah i i can see the point i just don't necessarily inherently agree with the, yeah. the how much of it like and it's exactly. like it's not like i even need like a ton it's not like i need the entire backstory of yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 makes sense yeah hat look not hat look tat look um uh but just like a little more context because i just felt that's like fair. i didn't understand her at all yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's like, fair. um but uh, one of the things i really liked about like especially the latter half of the movie when it came to kitty is mm. just how much you could see that she was there like you are making this decision I'm not going to let you fucking shirk away from it. You are yeah. doing this. Do not crumble underneath it. Yeah. Take your guns. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, no matter how much you, like, disagree with him or was mad at him or anything like that, it's like, I know you're fucking brilliant and I'm going to make sure that you don't, like, 
crumble underneath this. Do not open Pandora's box. Don't don't start feeling all of this stuff. You have to stick to your guns. And I'm re- there's like the inherent respect that comes out of that, especially mm. because Emily Blunt is just such a fucking oh. force. Oh. Like, just yes. the, the, the pillar of strength. And um, even when it is clear that she wasn't, you know, she was not a, a, a entirely put together person. I guess. Um, hmm. I think I agree in in both cases with you. Like you know, that was so much more there. Yeah. At the same time, I understand the decision behind it. Mm. The, where I don't really understand it is is with Kitty, Kitty especially because mm. I mean, I think. That there needed to be a lot more in there. Yeah, well. especially because of how important he, yeah. he she we clearly was to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, this you know, but I think I think both of them did a fantastic job with the roles that they oh, got. Oh like, God, they were so good, so good. Uh, everyone, I'm just gonna put this out there. Everyone was brilliant. Everybody's amazing in it. Everyone is brilliant, and like, it's just, I, it's so funny. Just how many times I know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one out here because actually because I um I have a real issue with um Casey Affleck as a person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't like him. I don't. I like was the fact very that he surprised keeps, when he showed up. I don't I like the like... fact that he keeps getting put cast in things. I, I just I don't. He's like just Google him. You'll find yeah. out why. Um, yeah. but so I will tough, say yes. the one scene he is in, he is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. I agree, but still, like, I, I him. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't like the guy, but there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I, that other. I will have to say this quickly because it's like you know, I was like, I didn't, I didn't check the casting. I know obviously the big roles, uh, like you know, Killian, whatever. I knew all about them, but then Heisenberg shows up. <laughs> And it was Matthias Schweighofer who played Dieter in Army of the Dead and Army of Thieves. Yes. And I love him so much. And when he showed up, I literally went like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. He's, he's just great. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, and there's actually a little side run. There's going to be a new Netflix movie with Gal Gadot coming out. And I was like, ah, I'm not interested in that. I'm not <laughs> interested. And then he's in it. And I'm I like, I don't Fuck. know if anybody caught this tiny eye roll I just made. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to be in it. So I might watch it. I love that man. He's so good. He's he's funny. He's, he's very good in his roles. And oh, when he showed up, I was like, ah, there he is. <laughs> That's my boy. Hey. Uh, love Kenneth Branagh. Loved everyone. Um, great casting all around. True for God, Barbie as well. I'm just going to put that oh, out there. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Great the, casting the, for Barbie. Both, well. both movies have had just like, you know, awesome. one of those things where it's like, hey, casting directors, good job. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, so, yeah. What is your rating on Oppenheimer? I really should think about these things more often. Um, <laughs> like before we do this, and I just never yeah. do. I just I never make any decisions. I it, it's it at least a nine. I will go saying again. I'm very biased with Christopher Nolan, but I also think that this is easily his magnum opus. So I it's a ten. It, it is a. a I, I think for me, there's still room for things that like I you know don't necessarily agree with but like just the putting together of the whole thing um mm-hmm. the woman who edited edits but a lot of his movies but also also done a lot of other work w- w- i wasn't sure about it at the beginning because it was a lot of cutting and then i realized yes. that, that was intentional because we were building up to a panic attack and i was like oh i see what's happening here yep. um uh the fucking makeup department i said this to you as well the, the makeup department on this movie awesome. phenomenal just awesome. I don't understand how they keep making Killian look so young and then so old. Because they are masters of their craft. Just like so good at just the hair that he had. Every- it was mm. I, I, it just really suited him. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it was really funny. Uh, I'm just gonna bring this up real quick. Uh, Hank Green made a tweet. Uh, weeks ago about how uh, he where, where he was asking whether or not they were going to include the whole thing about him poisoning nearly poisoning his like professor so yeah, within yeah. When, within the first five minutes of the movie that was what they showed I was like well Hank's gonna be playing <laughs> <laughs> didn't go. go into the fact that he didn't get punished for it or the fact that he you like <laughs> got like a slap on the wrist for like yep. nearly killing his nearly. professor yeah, yeah, yeah. um 
But, but here we but, go, like it, you know, I, I was again. very funny when they they like closed on the apple and then they showed him with the cyanide. I went, ah, <laughs> it's like quietly like. I see. Yes, yep. I guess the answer is that they are going to go into it. <laughs> yep. yep, 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 yep. True, true, true. Again, you can put everything in there. Wish they could. There's so much more in there. Uh, but I think they did a good job at mm. picking out the most important bits uh, that happened around the fucking Manhattan Project. Mm. Fuck that project. <laughs> Still, <laughs> that's the big lesson. Fuck that project. Uh, fucking amazing movie. I was yeah. blown away by it. Incredible. And here's the controversial thing I will say. I would probably not watch it again. <laughs> no, it's, it's Charlotte said the same thing to me, to be honest, because it was a really good movie. I probably won't go see it again. I actually might. <laughs> I'm only quite. I probably I, will too. I, but I like... love the, the, one of the things that um, uh, I think is huge. Um, somebody did also point out um, when when it comes to the whole phenomenon of Barbenheimer and all this sort of stuff is that like if you're really only interested in Barbie and you're just seeing Oppenheimer for shits and giggles, it's like, you need to prepare yourself properly because this is a movie with a lot of people in rooms talking. And I love movies where it's just a lot of people in rooms talking, but it's also not for everybody. So you kind of need to be ready to be intellectual about the thing. It's like, this is not a casual watching film. It's a movie to watch intently um, and with an active mind. Um, But yeah, it's great. Yeah. (laughs) Barbenheimer was a success. I think we can clearly say that it's uh, doing great things for the cinema, and isn't that isn't that the, isn't that the thing that we all care about the most? Yeah, or at least it should be. <laughs> it should be. It really should be. Uh, before we say goodbye, mm. I will quickly say that uh, I rewatched Insomnia, just as I told you. Oh yeah, uh, which is also Christopher Nolan's film. Uh, it wasn't written by him, which kind of shows a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but uh, it's still a fucking great movie. Uh, Al Pacino and Robin Williams is just a great pairing so whoever thought about that well done mm-hmm. um, yeah and this was us back from the you want to mention that <laughs> I'm going to mention the fact that I rewatched Inception after I saw um, uh, uh, fucking Barbenheimer Jesus Christ I rewatched Inception and that movie still rolls and then I watched Batman Begins and I'm going to be honest it's kind of meh like it's good like it's it, it, in the sense of like as a movie that is made, like you can see that it's incredibly well put together and all this sort of stuff. I just don't think it's that, like, I don't know, it's just not, I don't, I'm not huge on it. <laughs> because then you watch The Dark Knight and it's. I like, actually haven't watched The Dark Knight again yet, but um, I probably will do it at some point. But like, it, I think, compar- I, I don't know. I think the thing I said to you was the main thing, sticking point for me, and that, like, not making him the main villain in that movie is a mistake. <laughs> and if you want that, you watch Red Eye. <laughs> There's been a lot again. of clips of Red Eye being put out on Twitter. Um, well, X apparently is it's now fucking cold. <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, there's been a lot of clips I've seen. Um, and I'm like, I... watch the movie. <laughs> it's a fucking great movie. <laughs> <and> he's <laughs> brilliant in it. As he's in everything. Uh, I really hope he's going to say yes to 28 months later. I want that movie to happen with him back years? in the role. No, it should be months because. But I think they're talking about making weeks. It years. I know I heard that, but I was like, but like <laughs> the next one should be months. Like, shut up. <laughs> I love you, Killian and Danny Boyle and everyone, but like it needs to be days, weeks, months, and then years. And then you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, at this point, it's been more than 28 months. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. We are sure. closer. I hate to tell you this. We're closer to 28 years than it really after it had been 28 months. Oh, I know. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> just do it. I don't care how you're going to do it. Just do it. I want Killian back in the horror genre. So just like he did in Quiet Place Part 2. Yeah, honestly, horror. huge thing. I'm probably going to watch that again very soon. Yes. Um, <laughs> fucking love that movie. Because I haven't seen it since I went and saw the double feature in the cinema. And now I'm like, yeah, please do. I should uh, do that again. Because that yeah, rules. Should... It rules. <laughs> it rules. Um, that was us for now. We're mm-hmm. gonna be back next week. We didn't talk about it yet, but like, it's are we doing it next week? <laughs> yeah, because Secret Invasion is ending this. Uh, oh fuck! Day, so you have to watch it. Thing. Yep, you gotta go for it. You're gonna see a very familiar face in there. Just putting it out there right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out when I'm gonna watch that. Probably at the weekend. Yeah, yeah Thursday is Volume Two of The Witcher. And I have to be watching that. Sure, you do. I uh, do. I miss my boy. Oh, God. <laughs> fine <laughs> my boy why are you rolling your eyes my boy is henry cavill my boy is George oh that's Macy. true it, yeah 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 it's fine okay I, I wasn't that's fine 
<laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> be real here most of the people who are watching now are going to be watching for Anya Chilotra and Joey Basie and Freya because actually she's doing a great job there you go uh, until then watch movies, watch movies.